So I'm Adam Musican, head of business development at Flexion Therapeutics, like knee flexion. Uh, don't worry, people say Flexion all the time. Uh, we are a 300-person biopharmaceutical company based outside of Boston, Massachusetts. So thanks to the Alliance for having us present this year again. And thanks to all of you for avoiding the allure of the San Diego sunshine to stay in the session. I'll be making uh, forward-looking statements. We're a public company traded on the NASDAQ. So many of you may not know who Flexion Therapeutics is as a company. Uh, we are focused on developing and commercializing novel local therapies for musculoskeletal disorders. We developed a product called Zoretta, which was approved by FDA about two years ago, which is a novel combination of a steroid drug in a polymer matrix, which after intra-articular injection or injection into the joint, slowly releases active drug over the course of at least 12 weeks. This drug was approved for osteoarthritis knee pain. We built a commercial team and launched ourselves in the US and we are now expanding the label for Zoretta with additional indications like shoulder and hip osteoarthritis. I'll talk very much about our FX201 gene therapy candidate, which is a helper-dependent adenovirus that expresses interleukin-1 receptor antagonist in the setting of inflammation. Now, you may be wondering why helper-dependent adenovirus versus something like AAV, and I'll show you some data to support our choice. We're on track to initiate clinical studies in the US by the end of this year. Another pipeline uh, entrant that we added last month is FX301, which is a small molecule sodium channel antagonist combined with a novel formulation in a thermosensitive hydrogel, which you know, when you inject it around a nerve uh, is, a, is a liquid at room temperature and when it's ejected into the body becomes a gel acting as a drug release depot. And we believe FX301 will provide three to five days of analgesia following surgery and um, spare or preserve motor function to get patients up and out of the surgical suites faster. Uh, we are financially in a good place with nearly $180 million in cash on the balance sheet at the end of June, and we did a recent debt fin financing to add uh, to our balance sheet as well. So just to touch briefly on knee osteoarthritis, this is a serious disease, this is a big disease. And just in the last few years, over 15 million Americans have been diagnosed with knee OA. Millions of those patients require help with routine needs, require help with personal care, and the only therapies available are symptomatic. The age at which people have been getting diagnosed is, is falling, nearly 20 years since the 90s, and this earlier onset has resulted in a very long period of uh, non-surgical treatment. Beyond the symptomatic relief, like intraarticular steroids or hyaluronic acids or NSAIDs, there are no approved disease-modifying therapies although lots of companies and groups have tried. And we believe that managing the course of the disease, as well as the symptoms, is really where the unmet need lies in OA. So why has this been so hard to develop a disease-modifying drug? Well, for a couple of reasons. One, if you deliver systemic agents, getting them into the relevant tissues in the joint is really challenging due to the physical barriers of the joint geometry and structure. You can bypass that by delivering a molecule intraarticularly directly into the space, but these agents are typically cleared very rapidly from the synovial fluid in the lymphatics or the capillary drainage. So we thought, let's consider a gene therapy approach where we can deliver a therapeutic protein into the joint, accessing the relevant tissues for a very long period of time after a single injection. As we thought about this more, we realized gene therapy is extremely well suited for intraarticular treatment of OA. In osteoarthritis, the progression of the structural changes in the joint are very, very slow, occurring over many, many years. And with a single injection gene therapy, we, we believe it has the potential to maintain expression of the therapeutic protein for years. Secondly, because the joint is a compartment, this brings several advantages. One, the dose of viral particles that we believe that we can inject into the joint to deliver therapeutic levels of IL-1-RA is several orders of magnitude lower compared to systemically delivering the viral particles. And in a big disease like OA, which has millions of patients, there are COGS implications. You, you could not charge a million dollars for a gene therapy for osteoarthritis. But if we can make the drug at a cost-effective level, given the low dose requirements, we may be onto an interesting product candidate. Also, because the joint's a compartment and you inject locally, there's limited systemic exposure of the virus, reducing safety liabilities. Now, for a long time, osteoarthritis has been thought of as a wear and tear disorder of cartilage. But we believe that it's a disorder of the entire joint resulting from chronic low-grade inflammation. 
And changes that happen due to this inflammation into the joint affect many tissues, the synovium, the bone, and the cartilage. And IL-1, or interleukin-1, is a key cytokine that we believe is elevated in OA patients and is an orchestrator driving pain inflammation and structural progression based on the breakdown of extracellular matrix that occurs when the joint is exposed to IL-1 over a long period of time. So what is FX201 itself? Here's a schematic of the vector map, and it is a helper-dependent adenovirus, non-replicating and non-integrating using adenovirus serotype 5. The cassette itself contains the DNA for human interleukin-1 receptor antagonist, as well as an inflammation-sensitive promoter driven by NF-kappa B. And this vector is devoid of all viral genes and has a very large carrying capacity. A schematic of how FX201 actually works. The virus itself is injected into the joint, taken up by the cells lining the joint, like the synovium, the fibroblast, the ligament, and the fat pad, and turns the joint cells into IL-1-RA protein-producing factories, releasing IL-1-RA, which then subsequently blocks the action of IL-1 on the IL-1 receptor, mitigating the pain and symptoms, as well as possibly slowing the progression of the disease. So why did we pick helper-dependent adenovirus as the vector of choice? Well, for intraarticular injections, there's lots of data to suggest that helper-dependent AD has a lot of advantages over AAVs and previous generations of adenovirus. Number one, in the joint, there's a tenfold higher transduction efficiency of helper-dependent AD compared to other viral types. There's some data I'll show you in mice showing the persistence of the vector genomes for out to a year following intraarticular injection. From an immunogenicity perspective, the fact that the helper-dependent AD is gutted of viral genes is important. And we've been able to manufacture FX201 successfully with SAFC here in Carlsbad to get ready for clinical trials. And we believe commercial scale-up is feasible. Just a bit on IL-1-RA as a target. Uh, IL-1-RA in a recombinant human protein form is an approved drug by FDA called Anakinra, which has a nice safety, pro safety profile and has been used for a long time clinically. In many, many preclinical models of OA across all species using a variety of different delivery types, IL-1-RA has shown benefits to reduce pain and function, as well as slow the progression of disease in the models. A handful of clinician scientists have taken IL-1-RA or Anakinra and injected it clinically into osteoarthritic human knees and have shown nice benefits on pain and function, but those benefits haven't been sustained because the drug is cleared so rapidly from the joint. So what you see here on the right, in a collaboration with Imorphix in the UK, Highlighted in red are the bony changes that occur on the upper part of the knee uh, over a very long period of time in over 9,000 knees. And you can see this ridge of bony tissue. Using a dog model of ACL tear, what you can see in the panels on the left are, as IL-1RA is administered in increasing doses, the development of the bony ridge in a model of OA is disappearing. So we believe that if we can keep IL-1RA in the joint for a very pe long period of time, we can impact this bony shape development, which we think is key to osteoarthritis structural progression. Here's some data showing um, the results from FX201 injected into mouse joints, and this work was done in collaboration with Baylor College of Medicine several years ago. What you see in the top are the, uh, the helper-dependent adenovirus expressing luciferase, as a reporter gene uh, after three days following injection, showing that it stays local to the joint. At the bottom, you can see the helper dependent adenovirus expressing luciferase compared to the first generation adenovirus over the course of 365 days. And you can see that the helper dependent ad continues to express, while the first generation adenovirus only expresses for less than a few weeks and then is gone. What you see here is an example of the inflammation sensitive promoter. In a normal horse, uh, four levels of FX201 horse equivalent were injected. And after the acute reaction to the virus, you can see the levels of IL-1 in the synovial fluid going up, which after a few days, the animals were given NSAIDs to knock down the inflammation, and the IL-1 array levels then went down. Once those were stopped, the IL-1 array levels then went back up in the synovium and then decayed as the inflammation went away. Then on day 91, the animals were injected with LPS to activate inflammation, and IL-1 array levels then responded uh, to the injection, showing the ability of the vector to be inflammation sensitive to turn on the production of the protein. What you see here is uh, what we consider the gold standard osteoarthritis model in horse, where a chip is made inside the joint, 
and the animals are exercised to develop uh, the OA uh, mimic for humans. On the left, you can see uh, four parameters that assess pain and function in these animals, lameness, range of motion, flexion, and effusion. And in each case, at both doses, we saw significant effect to improve those parameters. On the right-hand side, what you see, both doses affecting the histology of the joint in terms of structural changes, uh, both from a gross level on the left and a microscopic on the right. And this data was particularly striking, given that these, this study was done in four horses per group. This is some new data that we generated with FX201 in a rat model of uh, OA. This is a rat ACL tear model, looking at the joint damage that occurs uh, 12 weeks after the surgery. On the left, you can see the, the bone and cartilage in blue and pink. In the ACL tear data in the presence of vehicle, you can see the cartilage cleft tears indicated with the yellow arrow, and bone sclerosis as indicated with the yellow asterisk. At both doses of FX201 rat equivalent, we see a restoration of both the cartilage and the bone, and a nice dose dependence actually in some additional data indicating that this um, gene therapy is doing some relevant things to the structure that we believe may be indicative of the human condition. Non-clinically, we've studied FX201 in a number of species, and in all species tested with this vector construct, at the doses planned for clinical trials, we've seen efficacy. We've confirmed safety in GLP rat studies, and this supports a large safety margin for the doses we're going to study in the clinic. And importantly, we've seen very limited vector distribution outside the joint, no shedding, giving us some comfort about systemic safety exposure. As I mentioned, we're working with SAFC on the manufacturing right now. We've had a highly consistent process to make the product with a very low helper virus in the final drug substance, which is great. We're beginning to work on scale-up and development of FX201 for post-phase two clinical trials. And where are we right now? We had a pre-IND meeting about a year and a half ago with FDA. We've been successfully able to make FX201 or GMP conditions. That's been completed. We've done the IND enabling non-clinical studies and shown good efficacy in a handful of models. And we expect to initiate first in human clinical studies in NEOA in the US by the end of this year. Thanks.